everyone, it's John here at the Barcella, and today uh, this video is probably going to be filed under miscellaneous, and I'll explain why in a second. But first of all, let's do a couple of uh, pieces for you so you can hear this instrument. So it's not uh, like me to, to play uh, classical music, but there we go. A little bit of Telemann. Um, yeah, so I, I quickly want to, to explain uh, this instrument. So what I have here is actually an instrument that I built. Um, and when I say built, I can't really say built actually. I have to say assembled because I did not build anything on this instrument. Um, I assembled it out of parts um, that I had available at the time. So uh, what we have here is a uh, old ambassador valve block, which is here, and this is olds, all olds. We have a Harrelson uh, trim kit. Um, so we've got a quarter inch kind of lighter weight trim kit on the top. We've got a couple of half inches on the bottom and one quarter in the middle. We do have a Harrelson ergonomic fingering. Um, now the bell is a Law Labelle. Um, an unmarked Lola bell, and I can't remember, this may be a C7 bell, uh, but it's a spare bell that I had uh, sitting around. Uh, on the back here we've got a custom, uh, when I say custom, like I modified a pipe um, to do the tail extension um, and cut that down. Um, we have a similar setup on the uh, top pipe, you notice the two are different. Um, I basically had to craft this to match the old ambassador tuning slide. Um, the lead pipe is a Carroll 5000 with a Carroll 1000 uh, mouthpiece receiver. I use that configuration because I know it's uh, set up for a lightweight instrument. Um, I like the 1000, uh, the 1000 mouthpiece receiver because it's the plainest and simple. It doesn't have any engraving on it. Um, now the uh, braces are interesting. Um, I did not brace the uh, bell to the valve block right here. Um, and that's a design, um, I used to own a Scottwell B-flat um, standard model, um, and that was a design element that I saw on the Scottwell horns, and I thought it was a really good, and it certainly uh, made the, the instrument play um, pretty vibrant. The braces I have here um, are interesting also. They are, are actually stamped Malone, so I believe this is uh, one of Bob Malone's early, um, probably pre Yamaha when he had his own custom shop, um, stamped Malone. I think these are bark braces. These came from a collection that I purchased and these two braces were in with that collection. Um, the braces alone are probably worth more than the valve block of the instrument. Um, yeah, and so uh, I got brave one night. I had a couple of icy cold beverages, as you do, and um, I decided to assemble this instrument. Um, let's just say I got pretty lucky because it does play um, pretty well in tune and does play pretty nice. Um, which is certainly not necessarily what I was expecting um, right off the bat to assemble an instrument. Now I played it safe because I knew most of these parts would go together quite well. Um, and I obviously matched the bore sizes etc. So I didn't play around too much with the bore sizes or anything like that. I played it really safe on this instrument. Some key learnings I learnt on this. Um, it's actually quite tricky to get everything to go um, nicely in alignment. Um, solder gets into all sorts of places that you don't want it to, um, but um, luckily I had done a little bit of training um, in a shop and I knew how to mitigate most of that. Um, there's a couple of little tips and tricks you can to stop solder going places. Um, using the right kind of solder certainly helps um, and I used the actually the solder um, from Allied Supply, which actually has a little bit of lead in it, um, it tends to um, run a little bit, it, it's a lower temperature and it runs a lot better um, and certainly it makes a better um, solder. Um, I basically built this pipe a little bit too short even though it kind of matches, just the way that it's set up is um, a little bit different. Um, and I probably would have uh, done something better on the back bell tail here. 
Um, also, I probably um, spent too much time mucking around with this joint right here when I could have done it first go. Um, and then when you, you go back at it several times, you tend to end up with mistakes. So I probably threw too much solder in there just to make sure that it was a good seal. Yeah, but in, in itself, it was a really good uh, experience, um, and I certainly learned a lot um, putting this together. Um, yeah, so for, for what it is, it's not an instrument that I would uh, probably sell. Um, reason being, if you want a custom instrument um, and you want it done right, um, there are people that, that have the skills and the knowledge to do that. Um, two of them I use very regularly, Josh Landris in New York and Kevin Powers in Michigan. Both of those um, uh, guys are very well known and they're custom horn builders. Um, and they've done all the measurements, they've done all the work, they know how the parts go together and if they don't have the parts, they can also fabricate them, which I cannot do. Which is the reason that uh, I would use them as opposed to building horns myself. I'm not saying you can't do it, I'm just saying it's a lot more difficult um, without the correct tools and without the correct knowledge. Um, so, there you have it. Um, maybe have time for one more little uh, sample. <laughs> because I know the D is going to be way up because I have to overcompensate it on that too. So that's the other little thing is I learned the importance when I was building this of getting these pipes the correct length. Um, so a sneaky little trick is I had to pull this out for the F to get the F um, on the line to, to play in tune. Um, I could probably build a, like quite easily a couple of little spaces to, to lengthen that tube a little bit. Um, but my D's are also super flat. Now I tend to play them flat anyway, just because uh, the pitch on my regular instruments on a committee, it, it tends to play kind of flat. Um, but uh, yeah, an interesting experiment. Experiment. If you have the opportunity to, to build one yourself, um, or maybe pick up a really cheap student trumpet um, and pull it apart and see if you can solder it back together, it's a really interesting experience to go through. Um, frustrating in some points um, and rewarding uh, if you can get it right. Um, uh, the other thing I did to this horn was I, obviously there's no lacquer on this, I stripped it. Um, I basically did a brushed finish on it. Um, you can do that uh, with many hours of uh, like a 3M pad and some steel, steel wool. Um, again, I wouldn't recommend that to someone that's ever done that before, but um, you can get a nice finished using some really cheap materials. Um, you can still see um, solder, solder patches on uh, bits of this instrument, but um, yeah, basically with a uh, 3M pad, um, the green one, um, that's the, that would be my, that's my first kind of run over. And then I go back with basically uh, cheap $2 uh, steel wool that has a little bit of soap on it. So you get a nice lather and then that's the secondary finish. I think a lot of people skip that and then they get these ugly, ugly lines from the scratches. Um, whereas if you go with the, the cheap $2 pads, that nice kind of um, soapy finish actually works in your advantage. The other thing is you have to basically do it in this kind of fashion if you're doing the bell. Um, it takes many, many hours to basically get it right, but uh, it's worth it in the end. So, I um, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I've, again, I say I'll file under miscellaneous. Um, if you have any questions about this, I did have, I have done another horn, um, and I'll demo uh, that on another video. Um, but there you have it. Um, if anyone wants to buy this instrument, um, you're more than welcome to make me an offer. Um, but bear in mind, it is not what I would regard as a professional uh, trumpet. Um, the bell alone is probably worth uh, more than the rest of the instrument and then we've got the braces. I mean, it's probably a stupid amount of money if you add up all the parts um, put into this instrument um, But it does play really nice. So if anyone wants to make an offer um, 
feel free to, to uh, reach out to me. Until the next video, I'll see you again.